We all know the term Tier 1, referencing the five units in the U.S. Armed Forces that are commonly known as Special Mission Units. Only the best of the best are even selected to go into selection for these units, let alone get selected on the team itself, since completing selection does not mean you're guaranteed a spot. But the U.S. is not the only country that has these top-tier units. Let's have a look at the world's most elite Special Mission Units. Welcome to the Spy Network. Before we begin, it's impossible to capture them all in one video. So if we forgot one we should have definitely covered, please let us know in the comments. Without further ado, here are some of the best Tier 1 units from all over the world in no particular order. Number 1. China's Snow Leopard Commando Unit this unit is named after the tenacious snow leopard, known for their ability to survive in harsh conditions. This is a special operations unit of the People's Republic of China, and they're specially trained to operate in snow-covered terrain. Most of their training is done in the Tibetan region of the Qinghai Plateau, which is inhabited by Tibetans and owned by China. It's the only unit of its kind in China. The unit's mission is to engage in mountain combat and conduct reconnaissance missions. It is, however, this specific unit that had been training in the shadows for five years to conduct counterterrorism, riot control, anti-hijacking, and bomb disposal for the Beijing Summer Olympics in 2008. Founded in 1969, the Snow Leopard unit was originally a platoon-sized unit of about 100 soldiers. In 1979, the unit was expanded to a regiment-sized unit and in 1985, it was expanded to a division-sized unit. The unit prides itself on the speed and accuracy of their marksmanship, their strength, their stamina, and their spirit of self-sacrifice. Each recruit must serve in the People's Armed Police for one to two years before undergoing physical and psychological tests. Perhaps where they excel the most is in martial arts and close-quarter battles, but their sniper squadron shouldn't be discounted. It is believed that they are trained to kill the wounded team members so they don't end up being captured. Makes you wonder why they aren't trained to keep them alive and get them out of the battlefield. A bit similar to leave no man behind, but a totally different outcome. Number two, the Special Services Group in Pakistan. This unit is known for going where the fire is hot. Created for counterterrorism and extremism, which due to their geographical location, is an easy guess. The Special Services Group, or SSG, is known for having an extreme physical selection. It is reported to have a 36-mile march that needs to be done in 12 hours and a five-mile full kit run with a cutoff at 50 minutes. Their training consists of grueling physical conditioning, hand-to-hand -hand combat, airborne school, a 25-week commando training course, and it's reported that only 5% will reach the end of the course. The commandos are known as the Maroon Berets as they are characterized by their headgear. They fall under the Pakistan Army Strategic Forces Command, and upon retirement out of this unit, they'll be directly recruited into the Inter-Services Intelligence Unit, which can be seen as the Secret Service of Pakistan. The SSG is responsible to deploy and execute five doctrinal missions, Foreign internal defense, reconnaissance, direct action, counterterrorism operations, and unconventional warfare. Within the SSG, there is the Zarar Company. This is the highly specialized counterterrorism unit. Zarar operators qualify after specialized training in counterterrorism tactics, hostage rescue, intelligence recon, sabotage, and other high risk operations and are seen as the elite unit within the SSG. Number three, South African Special Forces Brigade. The South African Special Forces, known as Rekis, is South Africa's principal special operations unit, specializing in various types of operations like counterinsurgency, long range reconnaissance, unconventional warfare, hostage rescue, and direct action operations. They are the only special forces unit in the South African National Defense Force. It originated out of 1972 
and they played a significant role in the country's 30-year-long border war in Nambia and Angola. The unit consists of two different parts. 4th Special Forces Regiment specializes in maritime-related activities, whereas 5th Special Forces Regiment specializes more in overland techniques, especially long-range infiltration. And unlike 99% of all other units in the world, this unit does not fall under the South African Army. 40 shuttle runs in 95 seconds, rope climbing, 1.8 mile run in full gear in 13 minutes, and a 9.3 mile ruck completed in 120 minutes is part of their physical selection. Basic paratraining is a prerequisite for starting the official selection course. The official special forces selection is said to be so grueling that there are consecutive years in their history of training that no students have passed and at some times, only one or two students graduate. After selection, a graduate passes on to the technical training an operator needs in order to conduct special operations. After completion, the operator receives the highly coveted operator's badge. But as we've learned, the few gets a whole new meaning here. Standard operator badges are silver, but a gold badge with an embedded diamond is awarded to operators with more than 10 years of active service. They reportedly give bush warfare and small team reconnaissance courses to the world's most elite special forces, as they are masters in those two crafts. One last note, an operator of the South African Special Forces, as part of the Force Intervention Brigade, made the eighth longest recorded sniper kill in history, with a confirmed distance of 2,125 meters or 2,324 yards, using a South African-made Dental NTW-20 anti-material rifle. This unit is a force to be reckoned with. Number four, the Lanceros of Colombia. There's young officers and enlisted men to be effective tactical leaders across the Colombian Army and in the Lancero Group, which performs special reconnaissance and direct action missions for Army divisions. In the mid-1950s, two U.S. Army Ranger officers on temporary duty established the Lancero Training Program for the Colombian Army. Colombia and the United States collaborated on an effort that resulted in one of the longest one-on-one -on -one professional military ties, three days, and is broken down into five phases, mountain, forest, swamp, maritime, and urban. 